Somewhere in a galaxy far, far away, there were lots of laws and all the physical laws. Newton came to see, but Mac didn't agree. Maxwell came along, he sang his own song. If light was a wave all along, like sound waves through air, the ether didn't sound so wrong. For moving sources of waves, they all knew the Doppler shift, but light was too swift. So Michelson and Morley let beams race over and over. They tied with no trace. If the ether did exist, there must be a twist. So in all conditions, they would persist. Was there something that they missed? This was Maxwell's medium, nothing to be dissed. However, time was left unnoticed. Until Lawrence thought mathematical tricks would resolve how the race's clock ticks. If the beams tied, then the links lied. Fascinating idea, fictitious local time. Lawrence contraction, a new paradigm. And over time, evidence of the ether would sublime. But in 1905, Olympia Academy arrived. A drunken patent clerk and friends revived works of Mac that knew and had it derived. The clerk rode trains, and the laws of physics had to be valid in all frames. To them, one outcome met one explanation. Moving source of lighter sound, physics must have a consistent foundation. If time was absolute, then what explained time dilation? A moving clock ticked slower, another frustration. He suspected time, but what was the formulation? Simultaneity was relative to time and space translation. Physics was natural causation and correlation, so there must be a relation. The clerk was on the sideline, and his name was Einstein. With all this in mind, he simply made two claims. Physics is consistent and valid in all inertial frames. The speed of light is constant, independent of moving frames. Simultaneity to Einstein was relative thus. The luminiferous ether will prove to be superfluous. <laughs>